I, you know, I have never read a book of yours that did not move me from the inside out, I have to tell you. And this book, Soar, I love this book so much. I've, you could tell I've been actually in this book a fair amount because I always say I like to put verbs in my sentences. And this is an action-oriented book about people getting their lives in gear. Why write about this now? I, I think our country, by and large, is stuck. Uh, economically, career-wise, millennials are stuck with degrees that are not usable and bills that they can't pay for. Middle America is frustrated because the jobs are gone and they don't seem to be coming back. Inner cities are frustrated because there's no economic opportunities in there. And that hostility has created the kind of stress in this country that made me sit down and start writing. Because I think each of us has a responsibility to stop waiting on someone to rescue us and redesign our lives and create the kind of life you want to live. Boy, that's the truth. You, you talk in here about catch a vision of your destination, mm -hmm. and that's the first step. Talk about that for a second, because I want people to hear that. If you don't know where you are going, you don't know what it takes to get there. And then I take them through practical practice. This is not just motivation. No, this no, no. I mean, it's that's not what I mean. That's no. what I mean about action steps here. You, you, do, you say, here's how to do it. Right, right. I got tired, I mean, of, of having people motivate me because motivation turns to frustration if you don't have information. Yeah. So, you know, you can only motivate me so long. It's going to be wonderful one day. It's going to be good one day. Don't worry, hang in there. It's going to be good one day. And, you know, that takes me for a while. But when gray hair starts popping up and knees start going out, you start saying, wait a minute. It's been a lot of days and a lot of months and a lot of years, and I'm still stuck and I'm running out of time. How many people? <laughs> How many people did you have in your first congregation? <laughs> seven. <laughs> I started with seven. <laughs> How many do you have in your congregation today? Over 30,000. Over 30,000. And uh, that didn't just happen overnight. No, it didn't happen overnight. And, and when, in the book, I talk about the, the pressures and the stress. And I founded the church. It's not like a board hired me and I came in, I work a job. I'm not a hired gun. I've, that means I did the painting and the cleaning and the rent negotiating and hiring the staff as we finally got staff. I went through all of that process from the ground up. Yeah. And not only that, when a lot of people know me as a preacher, but they don't know my entertainment company is older than the Potter's House. And I started that company with, with a little bit of money, started touring around the country doing plays and entertainment, things like that, stumbled into an opportunity to do a movie, stumbled into an opportunity to enter into a contract with Sony Pictures, who is my partner in producing movies that have grossed over $500 million at the box office. What I'm saying is, it doesn't matter where you start, it matters where you finish.